All right, now I'm back. I've let it bake for about eight minutes. You can see we're getting some really nicely resolved lighting. It's still pretty noisy, but uh, the noise and therefore how long something in pure light takes to bake is a function of the light map resolution. And this is an extremely high resolution light map and the filter size. And you can see we have some very fine filtering. So for incredibly cool lighting, this is ideal settings, but uh, for your average game wall, this is probably a bit extreme. Anyways, uh, you can see we have some great area shadows starting to uh, happen here from our ceiling light. You can see how the one-sided aspect of this bookcase, we have the sunlight come through, but it avoids any uh, real dark shadows on the wall from this. But uh, as for our projected interest texture, you can see there's really not much visible there. So I'm going to stop this and take a look at what's going on. I have a feeling that I have the light so bright that it's actually drowning out the area where I'm actually interested in here. So let's drop the power to 0.5 and maybe let's spread it out a little bit more. Let's go say 96. And I'm just going to, because I've masked everything else off, I can go start bake and let's do a start bake at four. So here, as it only has the one mesh, it's uh, uh, gonna try and bake the areas that it can see in the camera, but it's going to focus all four cores on the same mesh. What it's done is it's basically broken it into each little light map section. So we have wall, 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 etc. So you can see it's finished a little piece here, but it's still going. The baking, so it actually does the rendering. This is generating the lighting and then the filtering. So it's the stage that you save if you use the LM prefix. You can't use it on curved objects. Anyways, this is looking better. It's still very noisy because we only did uh, four samples here. But uh, you start to get a sense of there's a brighter section, a darker section, and some interesting banding here. So this is exactly what I was trying to go with for our projected interest texture. Now all I have to do is let it bake and really see. Anyways, I'm going to stop this though and uh, bring everything back on. Here's an interesting difference because I left the ceiling untouched with the original brighter corner light and I've since darkened it. This is the correct lighting. This mesh here shows what would happen if I was to bake the scene at the current settings. But you can see the ceiling here is still bright. These trim is still bright because they have the old lighting. This uh, is a side effect of the ability to bake independent sections. So for example, if I changed light over in one half of my map, I wouldn't have to bake the whole map, but it does, it can be a little bit dangerous. So something to be aware of, but uh, usually a little bit of observation, you're pretty safe. So now that I have this scene pretty much ready to go, I'm happy with my sunlight angles. I'm happy with my intensities. The next stage is to actually let it bake. And for that, I'm going to go start bake. I'm actually going to set it to save lighting after each pass. So save lighting, I'll just talk a bit about that right now. If I was to go save current module or save all modules, we'll talk about modules later. This then generates TGA files for all the lighting and saves it out, which can then be imported into the game engine of your choice. Uh, what I'm going to do here is save mo uh, lighting after each pass. It's going to go through, run 16, uh, uh, 16 samples, finish a pass at that, save the lighting, and then repeat. So this is ideal for, let's say I wanted to just leave this overnight and uh, let's say I have a power outage at three in the morning, I'll have exactly whatever lighting I happen to have at, uh, well, at three in the morning there. Now what's interesting, I'll show you one thing if I save this current lighting and then load pure light up again. See the lighting is exactly where it left off. So I can start, stop, save. So for example, I could have had it baked to this point last night Saved it, shut it down, done some work, and brought it up and continued baking at my leisure. So anyways, I'm going to set bake call module or save lighting after each pass. And then I'm going to start bake because we have different lighting. I don't want to continue. So I'm going to go start bake. 16 samples is a pretty good uh, uh, kind of long haul bake. And you can see here 5 million. This is going to take maybe about 8, 10 minutes, give or take, to finish a whole pass, including all the trim and the glass, couch, etc and uh, I'm just going to let that go. So I'm going to let this bake for a while and then I will get back and show you what the final results are. All right, I'm back. It's been uh, just a little over two hours here. Uh, we've finished 29 passes at 16 samples per pass, which is very resolved. Uh, you can see it's still baking, but really we're probably not going to get much better than this. 
The seam was probably usable here pro even an hour ago, but uh, finished as a relative term in pure light. Really, it'll bake until you think it's done. So right now it's good, so I'm going to stop it. I'm going to save the lighting, and I can now import this into the engine of my choice. Just taking a little look at this uh, light on the wall, you can see this band here, this bit of a darkness, and then there's a little bit of kind of these circles here. That's from that projected interest texture, so it's a subtle effect. Perhaps a little bit overboard in this case, but I uh, figured it helps exaggerate this beautiful bit of lighting here on the corner. So there we go, this is our Densi. Just going to show you how you can uh, set up some different lighting using the exact same geometry here. So I'm going to open a scene that I finished earlier, the magic of TV. So here we have the den scene that we uh, shipped in the example with the, uh, the torque build of pure light. This particular version, all the interior lights are off and it's just sunlight. You can see the uh, nice indirect light bouncing off the, uh, the walls here and on the couch. Indirect uh, shadows. This is a good example of why you want to have a fairly high resolution uh, indirect filter radius. It actually allows you to capture details such as this even though there's no direct light shining on the object. Now we'll get into modules and how we use them later, but uh, what we have set up in this scene is a couple of alternate schemes for lighting. And so I'm just going to jump from the day to dusk. So this is pretty much what we just baked. It looks like we had some color on the wall different colored couch and then we have uh, modules of night and so here we change the background added some geometry in a different light and our candles with some subsurface scattering how we did the subsurface scattering these objects are vertex lit fairly tessellated as you can see and then we brought the subsurface scattering via this so this is set at 100 percent subsurface and because of that the light will actually penetrate and blend through these vertices. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it uh, informative. Thank you very much.